car's all stock, seems like a great time to go and do the JH Motorsports uh, turbo oil filter lines, and we'll see what it takes to get there. Full disclosure, literally have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, let me have my little camera person say hi today. Hi. So we've got a camera assistant, and uh, like I said, I don't know what we're doing, but we'll get through this together. So vanity cover, uh, we're going to remove that and set that out of the way. So right here is the intercooler unit. I've already loosened the multi-use clamps. Looks like we're going to have to move that out of the way. This is so it seems like what we're going to try to do is all our oil lines, we can see the oil lines from up top here, uh, oil and coolant lines. It seems like everything is going to head down there, so I'm assuming we have to remove all this. Looks like here's our throttle body. We have another coolant line. I just unplugged what looks like this is some uh, the diverter, if I had to guess. These look like they're universal, and they can go on either side, but since this one was on that side. I'm just going to put a mark on it so we know that that's got to go back there. Uh, okay, so pulled some stuff out of the way. I'm going to try to get this coolant line. It looks like the next step might be to get this line out of the way and perhaps the diverter system. So let me look into that and I'll check back in. So what I've done here is right here, this is the tab for the throttle body. And what you're seeing here is a tab that normally is in like that. And you have to get in if you want to unplug this. You have to pull the tab back out like that. It recesses in. It looks like if I'm calculating all the stuff that we're going to have to mess with here, it looks like we're going to have to take some of these vacuum lines off. This turbo right here seems like it's got the majority uh, of vacuum uh, connect the vacuum connections to what looks like maybe the diverter valve on it. So I'm going to have to try to get in there. I'm going to take this, goes to the throttle body, I'm going to disconnect that. So obviously when the throttle body comes out, it won't be uh, an issue. Uh, and then I'm also going to try to remove this hose right here with a one-time use clamp. Uh, what we've done is these on here, these are T30s. So I've removed this one and have gotten the other one loose and we'll, we can remove that. But uh, in doing that, they, these hoses are connected to this, uh, this inlet pipe. So uh, that's where we're currently at. So there they slid down and then it just comes right out. The throttle bodies have this ridge, uh, these ridge marks in it, so the um, the charge pipes won't easily come off. But they, it wouldn't matter; they're not easily coming off anyway. It appears that the next move for us is going to be we're going to get these hoses off to give us a little bit more room, and then uh, we're going to pull out these two inlet pipes. Uh, and we'll see what that looks like here in a minute. So there's a lot to take in on this one. Um, as we're continuing in our uh, four liter uh, turbo oil line filter replacement, this, this next step was, uh, was a pretty big one. So this coolant line needs to be removed. Um, T30, that, uh, that comes out. Um, you're going to have a T30 here, here, and then one right here, and then the same on the other side, here, here, and here. Uh, obviously the coolant lines need to be disconnected. Um, as, as we get in here, what we're going to see, if I can get down here, there you go, there's right down here, I don't know if you can see it, here there is a 5 mil mil millimeter Allen. Right here, there's another five millimeter. 
down here, which you can't see is a five, five millimeter, but he, I, I'm, assume, I'm assuming somebody's been in here because it was not in there and it would have been incredibly tough to get to. So lighter fighter right there. They didn't put that one back in. Um, and then again, a, a five millimeter down here. What's interesting is as I was looking in here, I'm like, oh, well, this needs to separate. I separated this line. Uh, no, this whole unit is the intercooler and the uh, oil separator. So you'll see here in a minute, I'm going to get up here and pull it out, but it is, uh, it's, it's a pretty... It's, it's pretty, it's, yeah, there's a lot going on here. So let me pull it out and it'll, it'll make more sense. Once you get all of those out, it's just a quick seal, but this slides out. Um, oh, that was fun. Uh, okay. So this comes out. And look at it, this, this whole unit right here is the intercooler and the, oh, okay. There's a little bit of coolant left in there, sorry. Uh, but what happens is you have these three seals, right? Um, and that is handling that handles all the oil going in the, the engine. If you want to see in there, it's not great, but there's a picture of the intercooler and then, you know, one run or the other, but yeah, it's a uh, one solid unit. So you can see that there's uh there's, there's quite a bit, there's quite a bit going on here. So, okay. Uh, and then now, yeah, so we've exposed, in here you can see now we've we've exposed where we're looking to get down there to where the oil lines are at sorry about the wobbly camera but yeah so that's where we're going to be at now getting in there to um get those oil lines out i'll be curious uh what we're dealing with when we get in there uh i think i'm going to take these inlet pipes off right here the driver and passenger inlet. I think I'm gonna take those off just to give us a little bit more space. Uh, and then we'll come right back. Well, we pulled everything off as far as, uh, let's just take a reassessment here of where we're at. That's where we're at currently. We've pulled off the oil separator, the intercooler, obviously all of the top hoses and everything went to it. And now we've gotten here to where, I don't know if you can see, the turbos look pretty good. I, I looked at them. Obviously it's a stock car, 65,000 miles, uh, nothing too exciting to report. Um, I don't know if anybody actually even cares, but suppose we can zoom in. I mean, it's a stock turbo. There's nothing really exciting to report. You can see the, the wheels there. So I guess that was maybe worth the price of admission. But uh, like I said, 65,000 so far on it. Everything looks, looks good and we're about to now get in there and get our oil lines out so i'm gonna get into this and uh check back but like i said right now we're gonna take out this this these see if we can get these lines off and that looks like there's clips up there um but yeah i'm gonna start here here remove these and then just take it backwards and i'll check back in and it doesn't want to really come out super easy um as you take a look here, it looks like this seal might not be a bad idea to replace it. Uh, but what I'm doing up here is I'm just giving them a small bath of oil, getting these, getting the seals nice and uh, 
nice and oily. We don't want them to dry out. However, I think I'm going to be replacing that uh, that particular seal. So we've pulled that one out, and we're getting ready to do the other one. But I wanted to show you. They are in there pretty good from the top. You've got this line that comes in, and normally you have uh, you've got the bracket that holds those in. So what I did was I pull this out and I started wiggling this, and then found on the other side, if I get in there ever so slightly and just see if I can set it back down here and, and do it ever so slightly wiggle there you go it came up a little bit it breaks loose that tension that's holding it but what you're going to notice is that these you're going to need to finagle them a little bit to get them to come out because most likely the best results for getting these out would be to remove the turbos, which I'd like to not have to do. I'm putting a really good amount of tension on there to pop it up, which I did, and then it comes out. Same thing, there's a little bit of, looks like debris in there. I'm gonna soak it in some oil one side get those get those seals nice and oily uh, before I go and I put them up uh, and move on to the next step but we've got those out so the next step we're going to is we're going to move remove these oil lines that we need to remove anyway so far it was uh, a T30 for this support a T30 down, uh, you're not going to see that, uh, a T30 down here that we removed, the T30 on this side that we removed, T30 um, for the support bracket, and then up top, T30, T30. Uh, what I did on the other line when I took it out, and I know they probably only go in one way, but I marked, I marked the the oil lines based off of which side I got them from so there's no confusion uh, when we put them back in there but the next thing I think I'm gonna do is cut the zip tie pull this out uh, and then start working on these oil lines I noticed however that there is a bit of dirt uh, in there so I'm curious to see what that uh, what that oil line uh, oil filter is going to look like. So that's how we got those out and we're moving on to the sending unit and then these two lines we're just going to repeat the same thing that we we did up top you can already see there's a little bit of wiggle in that line uh, we should be able to make some progress uh, and then go from there. I'll check back in after we've gotten to the next step. In this particular uh, situation, I did mark the line, but these are not going back in. So this isn't, um, it's not imperative that we care where those are at. I'm going to remove that. Man, I like new cars. Things unplug. Uh, okay, so we have this set up here. I have this ready to pull out. Oh, oh yeah, that one's out. So these are real easy as as I struggle um, twist and turn and then slide it right up the back once you pull it out same thing if you're gonna uh, retain these lines now would be a really good time to uh, check your seals and and give them a little bit of an oil bath same thing here pulls straight up and out as I said it's marked and now in the back 
if we can see it, what we're starting to get looks like some oil is coming out of these lines back there where uh, a small amount of oil is coming out from where uh, we pulled the hoses, the lines from. The next step is to get up here and disconnect these lines. One of the things to check at this point is the health of these. My lines are are in really good shape, so I'm not going to replace these. Uh, but I do need to disconnect them from the from the turbos. Uh, in true Audi fashion, the clips are on the difficult side to get to for one, and uh, the, a little bit more accessible on the other side. So I'm going to try to remove those before I continue on to the next step. I'm trying to resist taking out that sending unit, but I just have a feeling that at some point I'm going to need to remove that. So, and then we have another plug, if you can see it, right here, but it looks like we have a little bit of slack in the wiring harness, so when we pick up the plate, uh, we can uh, unplug that. So, we're going to shoot for getting these drain lines disconnected from the turbos, and I will check right back in. Looking uh, now to get those uh, drain lines off the turbos, I thought I would take a second and show you the kind of... This is the clamp that is a multi-use um, clamp that's that's being used to hold these, these lines on the turbos. Um, I don't know how many times you might have tried to take these off, but uh, it is less than super exciting. They actually make a tool um, that's supposed to help. Supposed to, I say, in my air quotes. Uh, I get a decent amount of success out of it. How it works is what you're seeing here. You can't really see it too well, but the clamp goes on either side of those points and then as you squeeze the trigger it's supposed to uh well and it does here loosen the clamp it's got a tighten and an auto lock feature that's how that's supposed to work is that going to work here <laughs> well they're incredibly difficult to get to uh not sure if it is or not i don't even know if i can fit my tool in there and i don't think you want to watch me trying to slide my tool in there for a half hour uh I might be able to get it in there. I'm going to give this a shot and I'll let you know most likely what I will probably end up doing is just trying to spin the clamp around and then getting in there with a pair of pliers. Um, the tool works when it works and when there's a clamp that just doesn't want to play nice, it's just not going to play nice. But I'll check back in and, and let you know how we got. Here we are. Uh, we've kind of stay. I'm staging this here to to kind of give you uh, an idea on, on, on what we're dealing with. Um, so I've already pulled it out. I've already um, looked at my uh, oil filter screen, which uh, surprisingly would, um, had a little bit more in, in it than I thought it probably would for this many miles. Uh, so a couple easy things here. Um, the sending unit. Uh, yeah, it, it, I had to end up and giving up on that one and taking it out. Uh, it's a 24 millimeter. So that 24 millimeter that sits in your your toolbox, and you're like, when am I ever going to use that? Yeah, well, you're going to use it today. So this sending unit comes out, and what that really does is it just makes easier um, access access to this one right here, this one T uh, uh, T30. So there there's 11. T30s all together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One in the back there makes eight, nine, ten right here, and then eleven. Once you get that out, uh, and make sure you have eleven, because I got ten, and and this one was, this one that was still in behind the sensor, I. 
I was moving the tray and I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, it didn't come out because it's kind of obvious. It got to the point where I realized there must be a screw somewhere. There was just so much dirt and oil over the screw. I didn't know it was, I, you don't care. All right, so this is what it looks like when it comes out. That's the bottom tray. And then uh, here we go. This is our uh, this is our under unit right here. So let me set that there. Um, and this is the oil filter screen. Now, I, I, obviously, I cleaned it as I mentioned, um, but that is is what gets clogged. Um, and like I said, even after me cleaning it, there's still some little bits in there. Uh, but I'll put up the picture of what it looked like at 64,000 miles. Uh, and like I said, this is this gets removed now. We don't use this with the uh, the new JH Motorsports aftermarket oil filter kit that we're putting in. Uh, but yeah, there's that. Get down there, and we're gonna clean everything out again uh, a little bit more, and get ready to start doing uh, the reinstall. Now that we have everything all taken apart, separated, sorted. Here is our cover, the, uh, the stock uh, gasket plate. Here is our old cleaned oil filter screen. Obviously, we're going to be replacing that screen with a blank. We're just going to set that in where the stock, where the stock um, unit went. We're going to bring our stuff over here, back to the car, and we're ready for reassembly. So we've cleaned all of our, our surface areas. We're going to drop our gasket back into place and uh, start the reassembly now as we're moving right along. Here we are. We've, uh, we've made our way back. I've replaced the oil filter screen under uh, under the cover with the JHM blank that goes in. Obviously, if if you're just going to change out your oil filter screen, then there's really nothing different than you need to do putting it back together. Um, I chose to go with the JH Motorsports serviceable kit. So that's what we're going to be uh, installing next. I kind of have it laid out. As mentioned before, here's the, uh, the serviceable filters and all the lines. So these are the steps on how we do that. The next thing uh, is we have to start putting everything back together. So my oil lines, or I'm sorry, my, uh, my, my coolant drain lines are here, and thankfully I... I, I marked them so I'll know where to, they go and how to put them back in. So we're going to uh, put those in next and go from there. Well, I wanted to pop back in and, and share my thoughts. So originally, I, what I, so what I've got here is I've got my coolant lines and I was getting ready to put, uh, put the coolant lines back in after taking out my screen and, and, uh, and, and the filter and everything. Initially, my main goal was, you know, I didn't want to spend a ton of money that I didn't need to spend. So I thought I'd bring something up. So what ended the reason I ended up getting into um, what you're about to see was the O-ring on my coolant line had had swelled up, and when I went to go reinstall it, it just wasn't going to go. Uh, this was so swollen, and I'll show you here on this one. It was so swollen that it's it it collapsed under uh, under itself when I tried to reinstall it. Initially, my main thought was, well, I can you know these these O rings are probably pretty decent. Uh, when I inspected them, they really are, but I don't know if the camera is going to show this, but. <sighs> This this ring was quite robust and and it, it it didn't look bad, but when I got the replacement kit from JHM to replace the coolant O rings, I said, "Oh well, this one wasn't bad. I wasn't even going to really replace it," and I just did. Um, and I don't know if you can see it here, but 
while this ring is is in still good shape, you can see that the radius of the ring <coughs> has been over time compressed down uh, and replacing it initially by looking at it, I really wasn't going to, but ended up doing it and you can see a real difference um, when you do that. Like I said, right here is, this is the, the old ring that had swelled and that's the new ring and you can see how much tighter that is. Here's another one of the coolant ones. You can really see the, the, the difference between those two there. And then here's my old ring that I took off for the top coolant one and here's the bottom. Uh, normally when it comes to stuff like this I, I usually don't mess with anything because I just don't want there I don't want to break or run into more issues um, over time with breaking more stuff because I'm taking more stuff apart. But this was a really cheap uh, this was a really cheap investment and these go on really easy. Now I can't really, I can probably do this one handed, but I, it's probably not a wise idea. Got the coolant lines back in. I uh, wanted to point out just something really quick. You have to start with the passenger side coolant line, getting that in. As you can see, the driver side coolant line wraps on the outside of it. So in the next part, we're going to put in our upper oil lines. Uh, but since we're not using the stock units, we're replacing them with the serviceable oil line kit from JHM. I laid out the components as they're supposed to go in the car. A couple things that really make sense. Once you push the tabs down, the right side points to the right, the left side points to the left. I was concerned I wasn't going to get the top part right. But once you put these facing outwards as they go, there should be an up swing in the bottom of that. So if you got that wrong, it would be pushing down towards the table and that comes up. And then the left outside line is shorter than the right and the left inside line is longer than the driver's side. So we've got that. I'm going to put on the upper upper oil fitting line now. Just wanted to take a second and give a give a little bit of a suggestion. So uh, give a little bit of a suggestion. The the JHM oil uh, oil fittings they were 100% right. These things uh, they can only go in in one way. When you are putting in the, this top, uh, this top line, uh, and even when I re-put in the um, the the coolant lines, I noticed that with the new the new O-rings, it was a, it was a really tight fit. They didn't want to go in very easy. Uh, a little trick that I found was rotate them in, get them in the right place. There's a notch on either side. Just get in with two screwdrivers on both sides and just apply some nice easy pressure uh, and it'll pop in. I had the same thing that I had to do with the coolant line. Now there's no notch obviously, but I just put two screwdrivers at the base and pushed in and it, uh, it slid in really nice. Uh, I, it doesn't really make a difference. I marked the bracket for which side I took it from, but when you're installing the bracket, that's when you, you, you can see where the notches are at, and I don't know if you can see the head of that moving around. Once you once you have that placed in there, it's just going to go where it wants to go. I'm going to put in the uh, five millimeter Allen bolts that JHM. I'm going to put in. Well, they're not five millimeter, but I'm going to put in these Allen bolts in the most difficult to get to bolt. Uh, really a good idea on this. I just, uh, I just wouldn't have easily been able to get in there and, and, and put in the, the Torx bolt, but with a long T and what is this? The head of the bolt was, uh, five thirty seconds Allen key. Real easy. Uh, okay. So we're going to move on to the next steps. Next step, we were talking about 
dropping in the lower oil line uh, and in the instructions the uh, that are online JH Motorsports moves this line out of the way when I was getting into it I was like oh well my lines pretty far out of the way I don't really need to bother moving anything uh, a little trick if you don't want to move it um, I noticed that I mean, there was just the smallest amount of, of room that I could have tightened this bolt and it changed the angle of the geometry of where this came out. In the end, I could see where all this was happening. As you can see now that it's that this is in there, there's just plenty of room everywhere. I did uh, end up moving this line slightly uh, and was quite careful to see if at any point in time uh, anything was getting uh, probably pinched or compromised, did exactly what JHM uh, recommends. Got a pry bar in there and just put it on the face. Right here, there's a face of this fitting uh, and, and then just helped rotate it. Uh, went really easy. Again, I probably didn't need to do it, uh, but since they recommended it, I just did it, uh, did it anyway. Throw in some oil on the next line that uh, we'll install right there but before we can get in and 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 do that uh we're gonna have to put the top oil line on i just wanted to show that they drop in really nice and the one thing that i that i realized and i kind of leaving this up here when <laughs> When I was concerned that I was going to get these lines wrong, that I might put the, 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 the wrong line in a spot, this passenger one, as you can see, and I put the line in to accentuate it, see there's, there's the head on this that's perfectly round. This one has part of the flange cut away so these two things can fit in there. So just put that in there as, a, as an example to kind of show you and you can see you can see it's flat right there. I thought I would just do that to show you uh, as, as another thing to think about and look at when trying to identify what, uh, which, one, which one of these oil lines go where because you don't want to put in the wrong one and then get to that next step and, and find out. But I thought that was helpful, so I figured I'd add it and we're going to move on. Here we are. We've got our oil line in, drop, tighten down. We've got our braided hose that's up and hand tightened as best as we can do it. Due to the restrictions on space and most likely inability to get any sort of torque wrench or device in there to get the appropriate foot pounds uh, when it comes to tightening it, the suggested method uh, by JHM is something called one and a half flats called the flats method. On the end of the hose are these flat spots, right? That's where you'd put your 18 millimeter wrench. So in order to achieve the one and a half flats, this entire distance from here to here is a flat. So to have one and a half flats, you would cover the distance from this whole flat to another half one. And let me mark that and kind of show you what that would look like in reference. So what we have here is our starting point on the very end of here on our hose. So there's our hose, there's our starting part of the flat. Put my pen back. So this is our starting point. So th these two line up. That would be one flat and then a half. So that is the distance they want you to tighten once you've hand tightened it pretty thoroughly to call that an appropriate, uh, an appropriate amount of, of tightening. So I've got mine down here on an 18 millimeter. I've got my vice grips on there. I marked my vice grips as the starting point. I'm just 
turning, turning, turning. You can see I've got my mark there. Uh, it's starting to get a little bit of torque. So yeah, it's going to take a little bit of effort to get it on. You don't want to... Yeah. <laughs> so, so you get a feel for it. It's you're gonna have to put a little bit of effort into it. So I've spun this one and a half times, and I don't know if you can see it or if you even care, but here's the marking and there's my final marking. Put just a little bit more to it to call it good uh, and have it line up as exactly where it was, um, just in case I didn't get it tight enough by hand as my starting point of how far uh, it'll be once under tension for one and a half. So I'm going to finish off this and get that next line popped in there. There. We just put the last tightening on our driver's side oil line. Uh, and I wanted to take a second to point something out. So right in here, there's a bracket. And then here's your other coolant line. So there's just a little bit of area for this hose to come in almost perfectly uh, and not, not hit anything. Now obviously if you continue tightening it's going to hit that bracket. There was a sweet spot uh, for that to go and it was right there. And now's a good time to put back in your, your sensor. Don't forget to do that. It is a 24 millimeter. JHM supplied us with some heat shielding. As you can see these uh, oil lines come pretty close to uh, <clears throat> to the uh, manifolds there so I'm just going to install it on both sides as they gave plenty of heat shielding uh, to go on each one of the lines even though it looks initially like the line on the driver's side has plenty of room for no concern but still since they supplied it, I'm installing it. Seems like that should be, this should be plenty. So now that we have our lines ready and we've got the heat shielding on them, it's time to drop back in our, drop back in our oil separator as the camera takes a little bit of. And all right, so we've got this pushed in. We've got, uh, We've got our unit installed, check the holes. Now it's just gonna be time to slowly work my way around and uh, put back in the screws, making sure everything lines up. We've installed our oil separator intercooler unit, mounted the bolts and, and have everything where it's at. Now when we separated this, there was a few one-time use clamps, so keep that in mind you're going to probably need to have uh, a couple clamps to put this stuff together okay final tighten on the uh, throttle body uh, throttle bodies a couple good tips using a magnet to drop in these bolts helped also be very very uh, aware that this oil line needs to tuck in this groove well we're moving right along here now we're at the point to where we're going to seal our oil, uh, our oil filter unit, our reusable unit. You'll notice when you look in there, there is the screen inside. I oiled up the, uh, oiled up the other side of the gasket. We're going to tighten this by hand best we can. Gets tight. Now I found that 22 millimeter wrenches work pretty well for tightening it. And get the uh, wrenches on there. That's done. Make sure we can see our Screw the oil line in. I noticed that 
18 millimeters. And then let's get over to the car and then work on that part of the insulation right now. We're moving right along here, tightening the lines as we're going to proceed to our next step. This is uh, uh, an 18 millimeter and the threads here are a, a 22. So we're positioning and, and, and messing with our hoses to get everything to work right. The formula I found works really well for tightening, we're gonna work on this hose, is everything tightens moving towards the, the, final, the final destination. So hold the hose down and then slowly start working it with your fingers to get it to get it started and as you're tightening it it's going to be the same formula as we uh, we did last time when it comes to getting things tight we're going to continue to use the flats method so we're going to we're going to clamp on this in a minute but what i'm showing you is like i said we're we're getting all these into their final location making sure that everything is kind of hand tight before we put that that final that that final tightening on everything. Everything's been marked up. And obviously I stopped short of putting the tight on it. We're gonna do our, our markings for our flats method. I'm gonna start here. Here's my, my viewpoint. I've marked my one and a half. I've marked my viewpoint. And then this is going to come down here. So I've marked that. So I'm going to put a final tightening on these and come back, double check all of our other stuff, and we're almost there. All right. As you can see, our markings line up from going and getting these tightened. I'm going to go and double check the rest of it, but other than that, I. We're, everything's pretty much installed and uh, we can start moving to put the old car back together the rest of the parts everything's looking good so there's that we've got ourselves a million mile solution for not needing to worry about whether the screen uh, the oil screen before our turbochargers gets clogged and uh, we have a down turbo. So, really good solution. Uh, the install seemed to be pretty straightforward. I, I, uh, I hope I've been able to go and, and give you guys a, a good roadmap on how to get where we're at, but I'm pretty happy with the install. Like I said, now it's just going and putting everything back where it's supposed to go, firing up the car and uh, I don't know. I, I think we followed all the steps best we could. I don't see any reason for leaks. Seems like we plugged everything in. I'm just going to do another once over and make sure everything's where it's supposed to go. Plugged in how it's supposed to be. And yeah, and I guess just kind of go from there. So hope this was helpful.